Hi there, Becca Bradshaw here for Sam Via. We are here with Emma today and I'm so excited because Emma has been growing out a pixie cut. So we've hit this phase where it's looking super cute and we just wanna get in there. We wanna put a little bit more texture in it and make it look like it has some movement. So it's very heavy as you can see. So we're gonna go in and we are going to get it a little bit cropped, but still, it still has that movement. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna take a look at what we want the length of the hair to be. So mostly everything is, we're liking the perimeter, but we do know that we wanna pull it up just a little bit in the back. We're gonna find where the nape area is. The nape area is right there at the occipital bone. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna start to remove some weight here in the nape area and then we're gonna get the length next. So I'm gonna clip it out of the way. I'm using the Sambia dry cutting clips. These are fantastic for not leaving any type of a bend in the hair. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna get this out of the way and we're gonna come in here for you and we're just gonna trim it just a little bit from the nape area. So as you can see, We've got quite a bit of hair going on right here. We want it to kind of tuck to the neck and kick out just a little bit. So we're going to take these sections, we're gonna divide it in half, and we are going to elevate above the horizontal 90 right here, and we're gonna take off some of this weight. So as we go in, we know that we don't wanna make a really hard line in this hair because it's soft anyway. So we're gonna be using the reversible blender. The reversible blender is such a wonderful tool because what I know is I can place those teeth wherever I want the direction of the hair to go. So I want it to flip up. I'm gonna place those teeth up. I'm gonna take that hair, I'm going to cut it and back comb it as I'm cutting. So I can start to get a little bit of that kick here with the hair. Awesome, you can already see that it's working. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna use the reversible blender here. We're gonna use it as if it were a razor. So we're coming in, teeth pointed up still, and we want to kind of come through that perimeter and start to take out a little bit of weight from that perimeter line and we're getting a little points in this cut so that it is moving in an upward direction. Nice. Last thing to do here is just go ahead and refine that perimeter line. We're gonna come in with our Artist Series shear at this point and we're just going to come in and slide cut through these little ends. We're gonna take our fingers here at the length that we want for the hair to be, and we're gonna slightly flip them up. So if we are cutting a bob and we want the hair to bevel under, we're gonna make sure we bevel our fingers under. In this case, we want to flip it up. So we're gonna flip our fingers up. So with the nape out of the way, what we wanna focus on next is going to be the sides and the back. So we just wanna get the crown and the top sectioned off and out of the way. Dry cutting, we always have the advantage of we can actually see what's happening with the hair as it happens. So we're using our dry cutting clips here and we're gonna make sure that we can come in and give a little bit more lift, a little bit more shape to this cut. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did in the perimeter, which is on the sides, we're gonna elevate above that horizontal 90. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna stand to the side of Emma, and we like a lot of the length, but we can elevate above that horizontal 90 and take some of this hair off right here, which will allow it to kind of flick up. So right here, we're 45 degrees above the horizontal 90. We're gonna come in with our Artist Series Shear, and we're gonna start to remove the length right here in one compressed horizontal section. So we can start to see the hair is going to flick out at the side. So we're gonna do that all the way around and then we're gonna come in with a little bit of blending.
So as you can see, what we have going on is we really have this internal layering going on. We have these shorter pieces that are up here at the top of the shape, shorter pieces at the top, longer through that end of the shape. And we've just used the part of the head that is below the parietal and above the occipital. So that's the only area we've gone around paying close attention to the head shape as we're removing that weight. So step two of removing weight, we want to grab that reversible blender again. So in this area, we need to be very careful if we want the hair to flip up or flip under. On the sides, we want it to flip up. In the back here, we may want some of these to flip under. So we can always alternate the direction that we're using our reversible blender in to give us what we want, the outcome that we want in the hair. So we're gonna use a little bit of sheer over comb work for this, not taking out a whole bunch. These have maximum weight removal, so we really don't need to work that hard with these. All right, I'm gonna show you a close up of this. Get in here. What we're going to do is we're taking this hair, we're gonna use the wider teeth of our comb, okay? We're gonna use the wide teeth of our comb, come into the area that we want to remove weight. And we're going to just take our texture shear, this is the reversible blender, teeth down. And we're gonna come in here and just as we elevate, take off a little bit of weight. So we can see that shape starting to take place. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to do the same thing all the way around. So we're getting exactly what we want right here, which is in all pixie cuts, we wanna have that fun, playful sort of texture happening where we have pieces that we can move around, but we are kind of growing it out still. So we've still got that length that's happening. So here's another one of my favorite tools for editing we have the Artist Series slide cutting shear. And if you can see this little curved blade, the great thing about it is it's, it starts to move some of the hair out of the way for us. So we have this really beautiful texture that we can cut in with it. So we'll just look for little areas maybe that we want to edit. We can lift them back into that same elevation that we were cutting everything in, which is above the 90. And we can come in and we can slide cut with it just to piece them out even more. So short pushes long, we're getting those shorter pieces underneath to flip and push the hair out. Last little bits, the rest of the silhouette's looking great. So now we can kind of release the top and the crown here. So just like everybody that's growing out their hair, we often have parts of the hair that we have to let grow. So as we were looking at Emma's hair, we were looking at the fact that we probably want this crown area eventually to kind of live back from the highest point of the head. So we really can't take a lot of length from this, but we still wanna add in some texture. So what we're going to do is we're gonna to start to put a little texture through with our reversible blender through this, and we're gonna carve down into the hair with our reversible blender to start to encourage this hair to move back and down. So reversible blender, we need the hair to move down. So we wanna flip the shear so that the teeth are facing down. And last but not least, we need to work a little bit on the fringe on this shape. So we love to see a little bit of a really like swoopy, slightly 70s inspired fringe right here. So we just need to clean it up a little bit. It's headed in the right direction. Let's go ahead and take our fringe parting from the recession area, forward slope of the head, and we'll work with that first.
All right, you might notice that we're doing a little bit of a wider parting here using that natural recession area instead of just the bones from the head. So we want this parting all the way out here on a shorter shape and we want to use the forward slope of the head that's right in front of the highest point. You'll see it where the comb starts to dip forward. We're gonna take all of this hair, I know, all of it, and we're going to compress it to where we want it to kind of spin out from. So we're over directing everything to center front and that way it'll start to flip and move away from the part. So to keep everything heavy, we're gonna keep our elevation right here at the horizontal 90 and just clean it up by moving our finger angle. So our finger angle is going to be shorter at the top to connect those short layers, longer at the bottom. So there's the finger angle, shortest at the top, longest at the bottom. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim that again with our regular Artist Series shear. All right, best practices. We're putting texture in at the same elevation which we actually cut the solid shape in. So we're gonna go back to our reversible blenders and we're gonna point them up to get the hair to flick out a little bit. And we're gonna come in horizontally, just tap it a few times and then move the hair out of the way. Tap it and move it, tap it and move it. So it's just diffusing our shape a little bit and setting us up for that curtainy, swoopy, cute little fringe. Ah, uh, perfect. It's already starting to kind of bend at the corners there. Very exciting. All right, we just need to connect front to crown now. So as we're releasing the hair that is right behind the fringe, what we're looking at is we're seeing what these shorter pieces here eventually need to grow and come over the top. So we're just gonna clean up the shape and move it in the direction that we wanna move it in. So we're gonna take that hair that is right behind the fringe parting that we used, and we're gonna follow that same pattern. We're gonna be using these diagonal forward sections. So that diagonal forward section, we're going to elevate that straight up to the horizontal 90, right there to the horizontal 90, and we're gonna come in and we are going to come in with that slide cutting shear and just start to point cut and move some of that hair out of the way. So we're gonna continue that all the way back until it reaches the crown area. We definitely have got enough texture in it for Emma to move this around. And as you can see, we've got our little dream fringe happening here. Just a tiny bit of product and Emma would be able to kind of flick this out a little bit. And we've just used these tools to our best advantage to dry cut a pixie. Have a great day.